We are going to use an online computer aided design tool to create a pattern for a mask. We'll learn the basics of sketching out something in this tool and we'll learn about some shapes and how to make an actual printable pattern so that you can make your own mask as part of the manufacturing assignment. To get started, we're going to use a program called OnShape. We're using this because it's completely online. You don't need to install any software and it runs in your browser. There's a free education plan. If you go to onshape.com slash education hyphen plan, you should be able to register through this dialog box here. Once you've registered with your PVCC email, feel free to check it, make sure you activate your account. And once you've done that, you can sign in. When you sign in, make sure you enter that same account and your password that you just created. Logging into Onshape isn't too difficult. When you get started, you should have a simple uh, documents panel. What we're going to do is create a new document. You probably don't have any documents. I just created a short mask so that we can use that as a guide. So once you log into Onshape, you should at the bottom left see that you have an education subscription and you should be able to see the, your account information at the top. When you go to the top left and click create, we're going to create a new document. You can name your document at this point and hit OK. This should pull up the computer-aided drawing or CAD environment. This area is our view panel, so we can see all of our shapes and designs in 2D or 3D. We're mostly going to work in 2D just to get some basics of sketching and how to create simple shapes, but you can progress from here and create 3D shapes that are laser cuttable or 3D printable. Um, this software is fairly powerful for a CAD tool, especially being online in a browser. If you lose your three-dimensional space, this view cube up at the top right allows you to find your orientation. So if I was working on the top, I could click top and turn my view so that I'm looking at a 2D version of the top of something. If I'd like to go back to my home view, I can click corner, find the view, and also this around if it's in your way, turn your view cube, get what you like. Okay. Our normal view is going to be where the X is pointing right, the Y is pointing back, and the Z is up. We'll use the top plane here, which turns out to be the X and the Y plane in this program. This might vary per CAD program, but for on shape, this is the standard that they're using. Get started, we are going to create a sketch on this top plane. So you can click the top plane and you can go up to the top menu and click sketch. Notice here that on the left you have a browser and this tree shows you all the elements of your design. We've just created a new sketch, so it pulled up the sketch for us. I'm going to click the pencil icon and name this sketch, and this is going to be my outer mask. It shows what plane that I'm going to be drawing on, and I can show my constraints, which would be like my dimensions and all the things that lock a drawing into place, which we'll get into in a second. So I'll click that, and now I have an outer mask. If I ever want to go into this, I can right click it and hit edit. I'm working in sketch tools. Notice how all these tools at the, at the top changed. If I'm in a three dimensional view and I want to face this, right click my sketch and then say view normal to sketch plane. And that should lock you right into that top view. Also, you can use your cube to click the top since we knew we drew right on the top. We're going to get started by drawing a rough shape. I posted a few patterns on the UVA Health site. There's a couple here that you can check. 
Also, this neighbors helping nurses pattern is uh, downloadable here, and you can kind of look through the tutorial to see. This pattern is a one-to-one. -one. I like it, so I'm gonna use that as uh, my guide. You can see there's a one-inch square, and I took rough measurements from here and adapted them to my own uh, ergonomics or my face. So once I'm in sketch mode, I'm gonna just do a rough sketch of that particular shape. I wanna start with my straight lines because it makes it easier. So let's click the line tool and we're just gonna draw off into space. I wanna make sure that it's vertical. If you see that little line off to the right, that means this line is vertical. If I move it, see how that line goes away and I'm at an angle. This can be fixed, but we wanna try to make sure that we employ these constraints upon drawing them so that it makes our design a little easier to manipulate. I see the line, I'm just gonna click. I don't care about the measurements right now. I have one more straight line, but it's actually off on an angle in my design. So I'm gonna click over in this direction and make sure that it's not locked horizontal. Now that I've finished the two straight lines, if I look back at my pattern, it looks like I have two arcs. So I'm gonna create two arcs. I will hover over and find the arc, three point arc. And I want this point to actually coincide or be vertical. See my line pops up with that line. And now I can control that radius. And this isn't super important right now because we'll add the dimensions later. I'm gonna click something that looks roughly like my shape. I'm gonna keep the arc tool on and I'm gonna click this point, this end point, and I'm gonna move my arc in and out. You can see above the screen that dot moving with the arc, that's the center point, so we get a radius from that. I'm gonna click about where I think my measurements should be, and I get my rough shape of my mask pattern. Right now, if we press escape and manipulate all of our parts, and this is good and bad. It gets a little confusing if we start moving too much around too fast. You can see it will mess up my angles and things like that. So we wanna to totally define all of the parts of this drawing. One of the dimensions that I am certain of is the distance from this point to the center of this line. To find the center of this line, I'm gonna add a point. So I'm gonna Make sure I deselect everything and then click point. I'm going to hover over this line until I see that yellow box. Once I've done that, I know that that point is in the midpoint. If you want to zoom in or out, just scroll your mouse wheel in and out. If you don't have a mouse wheel, you can move your two fingers on the mouse pad. I suggest using a mouse in all cases. I'm now going to hover over dimension and put my first dimension in this project. This allows me to set an actual definition for this sketch. When I click those two points, I wanna make sure that I get this linear dimension here. This is really hard to measure and this would be hard to measure. So this is what sort of made sense when I was measuring the template and my face. I know that that is five inches. That should scale out my whole drawing and the reason I chose that particular dimension first was so that the whole entire mask and, uh, would scale up with the drawing. If I chose a different one, sometimes your drawing will get screwed up and you have to fix it. My next dimension that I know is the distance from this point to this point. I want this point and this point to be in line with each other. And if you look at these little boxes that popped up, those are the constraints. This has a vertical constraint from this point to this point, meaning they're aligned up and down on this drawing. If I go back to this line, I have that same little vertical line here. That means that that line is always going to be vertical, or in this case, on the y-axis. Those are really important to follow to make sure your drawing locks into the place that you want it or the shape that you want. So I'm gonna use that dimension tool 
I'm going to dimension from this point to this point. I measured that distance to be seven inches. We can see the drawing is start to take shape. I also know that I want this radius here to match that five inch mark here. You can see the center point. So I'm just going to click this line with my dimension and it already knows that it's part of a circle. So I'm going to set a radius to five inches. I also have another arc on this side. So when I click that with my dimension tool, you can see it's trying to measure from that point and I can make a whole circle. I'm just going to bring it in because it's easier to read on the inside. And that radius is going to be six. Another crucial measurement that is pretty easy to find is this point, this point. Again, based on my own personal measurements, that became six. This makes up the majority of the, uh, the dimensions for this mask, but I'm missing a couple things. If I press escape to get out of my tools, and let's say I click a point and move it, and see the drawing still moves in a funky way. So I know I want an angle here because I decided to not make that perfectly straight. So I'll go back to my dimension tool. I'm going to click this line, this line, and now I can set an angle for this drawing. I want this to be a 92.5 degree angle. It's not a lot, but it's enough to help cover part of my chin. The last thing that I want to do is, again, I'm going to check, I'm going to move this, and notice that uh, the mask moves around and doesn't change its uh, shape or dimensions. So the only thing left to do is to fix it in a space. I'm going to use the coincident tool. I'm going to coincident this point here right to the origin on my drawing. If you notice now, my whole entire drawing just turned an outline of black and it's shaded in the middle. That means I've fully constrained this drawing and it's ready for production. I can click the green check on my drawing and you can see I've got a shape here that's a two dimensional shape to create my mask from. I have a couple options. I can right click and export as a DXF or a DWG. And what that will do is allow me to download a file that's ready for production. I can bring that to a CNC machine, a laser cutter, a vinyl cutter, um, something like that that would allow me to manufacture these at a higher level. I can also create a finalized template drawing, which is what we're going to do next. So we're going to right click and create drawing of outer mask. You can look at your Onshape uh, templates here, and we can always change these uh, a little bit later. And I'm gonna choose an ISO A4, and we can change that a little bit later. Once you've entered the drawing space, you probably wanna look at this dialog box at the top left. Where it says view scale, if we're making a template, we want this to be one to one. So when you print it, it's the exact shape of the uh, design that you're making. And we're just going to place this for now. But what we've done is created a one to one scale and representation of our part. If we'd like to, we can click this sheets and we can see another tree of what we have. The sketch was placed from the outer mass document into sheet one. I'm gonna right click sheet one, hit properties. From here we can see that we have a custom size and a A4 format. A4 format doesn't seem to totally fit with this title block, so let's see if we can fit that in as a portrait. That'll allow us to get rid of the border and still use that title block. I'm going to hit the check, and now if I click on this shape, I can move it into space. Fit nicely inside of that box. 
You can delete these lines if you don't like them or if your mask doesn't fit. And we can go down here and enter information. It already placed the name of the drawer and the date. We can give this a nice little title if we'd like. And let's call this Ask video and our scale is listed. Anything else you'd like to add in here, uh, feel free to do so. Once you've selected your final template, you now have a printable PDF to just send right to a printer and create, or you can use this again to create another manufacturable product. What we'll do is make one that is just your template, and then we'll add another sheet that has the dimensions in it. So at the top where it says sheets one, the plus sign for insert sheet. That'll give us a second sheet. We can change the properties on that sheet like we did before. Select A4 portrait, hit our check, and where it says insert view, Click that, see if your sketch shows up. This is where we can change the scale. You could make this a one to two scale and put in multiple drawings. So I'll do a one to two. You can see that popped up in our smaller title block. And I can start adding dimensions. I can recreate a lot of those dimensions from our previous drawing, or you can Use your arcs and things like that. I'll put in a few dimensions just so that my template matches. Since we chose A4, that's actually a, a universal, so it's in metric. You can right click, edit your dimension, and change to inches. And that should automatically pop up. I'll select my next dimension from here to here. I'll select my dimension from here to here. And I will select my angle from here. And my two arcs. And I've just created all my major dimensions for this particular part. I'll go back now and just right click, edit, and turn these into standard or inches. And that should cover all the dimensions for this. We'll go back and create another sketch for the inside of our part and you'd like to figure out how to flip your drawing, that would be a great thing to learn. All of your uh, assemblies, your drawing and studio are down here, so you can go right back to your part. You can manipulate your part. If you'd like to make an offset of an existing sketch, we'll make a sketch, and we'll do that again on the top. See how it created a second sketch? I'll edit this and do inner mask and when we edit our sketch we can project this geometry into our other sketch and then use that to do an offset so if we hit the drop down and say use we can click our initial sketch and then if we select offset we can offset this a specific distance. I'm going to go about 5 eighths of an inch in. So when I select my dimension, I want to select this dimension here. I'll say 5 eighths. And that enabled me to make an inner pattern that's slightly smaller but to the exact same dimensions and it'll use my previous drawing. I now have the ability to hide the outer mask and just show this inner mask.
we can finish that sketch and now we have our same sketches. From here I can create another drawing and use that inner seam to make my full template. Again, make sure you check your own dimensions, make enough drawings so that you have your outer and inner and a full template that you can cut out and make your own mask from. Good luck, have fun, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.